know of anyone with this next item we're bringing to you. Have you have you ever heard of atrial fibrillation? I haven't known. Well, it's a serious heart condition that can increase your chances of getting a stroke. Now, despite the fact that it affects all ethnic groups, a local charity is worried that the black community is being left behind when it comes to awareness and understanding of it. I'm very pleased to say that joining us on the programme this evening is Trudy Loban, who's MBE, CEO and founder of the Warwickshire-based charity, the AF, Fib um, the AF Association. Good evening to you, Trudy. All being well, uh, she will be there. But I think we've just had a little um, problem and we've just lost her. Um, but we'll, we'll do our best to uh, bring her uh, back up. But we do have another guest, uh, Tej. Uh, where are we? Tej Adderley. Good evening to you, Tej. All being well, I can speak to you. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Good evening. Um, to you. Yeah, we're speaking to you in Florida, but you're um, from the Bahamas originally and you have um, atrial fibrillation. Can you tell us a little bit about your condition and how were you diagnosed with it? Um, yeah, I had it. I don't have it right now. Um, I, can, I contracted it, I guess. I came down with it my last um, semester in college. Um, it wasn't for any reason. I know usually it happens to older patients or people with um, with um, heart conditions or like diabetes, high blood pressure, but I didn't get it for any reason. I was 23, so um, wow. it was really sporadic. So you, you're very young, so not to have had it. Well, I'm going to keep you there for the minute, Tej, and bring in um, Trudy uh, Loban and, and speak to her, and we'll have uh, both uh, Joe and I speaking to you. But uh, uh, Trudy, welcome to the program. Hello, thank Trudy. You. Hi. Th yes, th thank you so much for joining us. Trudy is uh, Trudy Loban, MBE, is the CEO and founder of Warwickshire-based charity called the AF Association. That's Atrial Fibrillation Association. Thank you for joining us uh, tonight. Um, both Nikki and I uh, think we've only just come across this term. What exactly is atrial fibrillation? Atrial fibrillation is the most common heart rhythm disorder, and uh, it's the number one cause leading to stroke. In fact, if you have AS, you, it's 500,000 uh, chance increase that you will go on to have an AF-related stroke, and AF-related strokes are one of the most devastating types of stroke you can have. And it's when um, the chambers, you have four chambers of the heart, and they're not beating uh, in, in unison. So you have an irregular heart rhythm, and instead of the blood flowing uh, in a rhythmic style through your heart and around the body, it quivers like a, like a bag of worms. Right. And so little clots can form, which go on to cause a stroke. And what sort of numbers of people uh, suffer from this? So far uh, in the UK, 1.6, sorry, in England alone, 1 million people, and in the UK, 1.6 million people have been diagnosed with AS. But it's thought at least a third more of that number are walking around totally unaware that they have AS and are at risk of an AS related stroke. And what would the symptoms be? Well, for some people, other than perhaps palpitations, they may not have any symptoms. And that's why it's important to understand and know your pulse, because that is the easiest way to detect an irregular heart rhythm. For others, they have pounding in their chest, palpitations like headedness, a general feeling of unwell, and they can go to their doctor and the symptoms are picked up almost immediately. Um, but it is important that we have a, a campaign about knowing your pulse and routine screening for AS. And you can go to knowyourpulse.org to find out four easy steps on taking your own pulse and helping to monitor your heart and to help your doctor as well. And, of course, it is quite serious because, as you say, it's uh, one of the leading uh, um, ways in which people can move on to getting a stroke. I know what I Absolutely, had. and it's, it's known that... Uh, people that suffer an AF-related stroke is far more devastating and in many cases uh, fatal when they have a stroke caused because of atrial fibrillation. Just wait, uh, wait on there for us, Trudy, if you can. Uh, Tej, thank you for holding on. Let me come back to you. You've probably been listening to Trudy and, and giving you some of the, the insight into it. For, for you, um, you said you, you were diagnosed with it at 23. Uh, yeah, I was were 23 some of, when I... When the, some of those symptoms that um, Trudy's mentioned, were they things that you recognize now yeah i recognize it now but at the time i really didn't know what i had i thought i had a fluke actually 
I thought I was coming out with a flu or um, something. When I described my symptoms, they they thought it was I was like anemic or whatnot. <laughs> um, they was until they didn't know until they actually um, checked my uh, they EKG'd me and checked my heart, and then that's when they discovered I had um, AFib. But I was just tired all the time. Um, sometimes I feel nauseous. Sometimes I just need to sit down because I was winded. So. <laughs> But how, I mean, how old are you now? Right, I'm 28 right now. I was 23, about to turn 24 when I contracted it, or when I came down with it. So that's four, four and a half, five years ago. Uh, any... That's exactly about four years ago, yeah. So anything now that's, that's made you change your lifestyle in light of, of having AF? Um, I think, I, I think, well, I'm more aware of my body and what's going on with it. Um, in terms of having AF, I was a college basketball player. I was getting myself ready to, to have a career playing professional basketball, and I couldn't do it after that AF. But um, I'm pretty healthy right now. I'm just more aware of um, my body and taking care of it, um, I guess, for when I get older, because I don't want the same type of thing to happen again when I get older. And my family is predisposed to high blood pressure, too. I want to take care of myself. I don't want it to come back when I get older. It really wasn't any fun. Is that likely, Trudy? As we, you know, Joe and I were, were fascinated by hearing this and hearing Tasia's story. Is it likely that it could come back? Yes, it is. Um, and the important thing is to be aware. And, you know, for some people, the majority of people are over the age of 64 when they uh, begin showing symptoms of AF. However, it can be as young or even younger than Tage. So, it's really important that you get diagnosed, you offer the most appropriate treatment for AF. And for some people, that's catheter ablation. For others, it's drugs. And most importantly, that you're also anticoagulated. Or if you can't have anticoagulation, then you can uh, have a small device implanted, left atrial appendage, it's called, um, so that it reduces your risk of a stroke. And uh, it's clearly treatable. Is it, is it, can you eradicate it once you've uh, diagnosed? For some, yeah, for some people, if diagnosed early enough and it's appropriate for you, then yes, you can go on to have castor ablation. And for some people, it's highly successful. For others, it's not. And the longer you live with AF before getting treatment, the harder it sometimes becomes to treat it. So it's a case of managing your AF. Right. Uh, but certainly most importantly, you know, is getting that diagnosis, because if not, you're at such high risk. And, um, and there are doctors, uh, you see a cardiologist, but what you need to do with AS is see a cardiologist with a special interest in heart rhythm, and that's an electrophysiologist. Uh, it's a bit like seeing the plumber or the electrician, and AS is an uh, electrical problem with the heart, so you right. want to make sure you see the cardiologist with an interest in the electrical side. Now, I went to a conference... And so for all this... Sorry, for all this information, you can go to www.afa.org.uk, our website, and there's also a 24-hour helpline so that we can help people, A, to identify, to manage, and to signpost them to experts sure. if necessary. Just a couple of other questions before we let you go. I went to a conference this past week which was dealing um, with another health issue, um, prostate cancer to be specific, and they we were talking about black uh, men being th up to three or more times more likely than white men to, to, to have that uh, problem. Are there any ethnic specific issues with AF? At the most, they're still trying to diagnose the number of people. It's increased. It used to be um, prevalence of 0.9%. That's now increased to 1.9%. Um, you know, at the moment, we just know that uh, you're at high risk, certainly by the age of 64, one in four chances. Irrespective of, of what ethnicity AF, you are. Irrespective, yes, yes. Um, but their studies are ongoing sure. to delve deeper. Give us that uh, web address again that you gave a while ago www.afa.org.uk. It's Association. 
All right. Thank you so much. Very serious matter, and I'm very pleased that you have been able to bring it to our attention. Our thanks also to Tej. Oh, oh, before we do let Tej go, Tej, just only a quick one. You, you wanted to be a professional basketball player, got struck with AF at 23. What are you currently doing four or five years on? Well, um, um, I went back home. I went to college in the United States. I came back home to the Bahamas. I'm working and going to grad school right now. Well, um, well done. So you've, you've got your life back on track despite having that. Oh, definitely. I'm nowhere near as athletic as, as I was in college, but I'm, I work out a lot. I play sports. I'm in pretty good shape, <laughs> to say the least. So um, I, 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 I managed to, um, to get myself together. What the doctors told me was that because I had um I had uh it was a hybrid maze maze procedure it was like an experimental surgery I had it in Florida but what they told me was that um because I had it so young I was um better able to recover than an older patient would have been so. Well, it's wonderful to hear that you have recovered and that you you know you're getting your life back on track. Um, so we really do appreciate you speaking to us uh, this evening. All the best for the Christmas and New Year, Tej. Oh, thank you very much. You too. Bless you. And also, we pass on season greetings to you as well, Trudy. Trudy Loban for speaking thank to us. Thank you much indeed. Happy Christmas to you. Well, look at that, hey, Joe. Fascinating to hear about oh. that. I wasn't expecting 64 plus, and the fact that there's no real symptoms that you could pinpoint. And it's interesting, well, the palpitations, I suppose, irregular heartbeat is one, and um, some uh, sort of bloated stomach uh, or, or something. A you see, most people just say, like, you know, it's like, put it to wind, take, take, wash out. Tage thought he was getting the flu. Uh, so obviously quite a, a serious issue here. And uh, 1.6 million people in the UK okay. who have been diagnosed. Mm. And they think that, according to what we're just hearing there, that may be under diagnosis as well. So if you're having those kind of symptoms, then go tell the doctor. And of course, what we find a number of cases with these kind of semi-rare uh, issues, health issues, that some doc GPs aren't up to speed on, on some of them. So you may have to say, you know, can you screen for AF? Yes, very much. So we really would appreciate you uh, getting in touch with us this evening. The number that you can use is 08453 We'd love to hear your thoughts on hearing about um, atrial fibrillation, um, but on, on anything else that you'd like to share with us this evening.